Hey, what's up, guys? Hardleg Joe here, coming at you with the What a Deck profile for episode 158, Cardian Slot Machine, as brought to you by Patreon sponsor, Frankly, I'm a Person. For a monster lineup, we're playing exclusively Flower Cardians. We have one Polonia with Phoenix, one Pine with Crane, three Willow with Calligrapher, three Polonia, three Willow, two Zebra Grass, three Deer, three Boar, three Butterfly, three Curtain, and three Pine. For spells, we're playing three Flower Stacking, three Super Koi Koi, three Recardination, three Flower Gathering, one Moon Mirror Shield, and one Rhoda. Our extra deck consists of two Light Flare, two Light Shower, and one each of Board Fly, Moonflower Viewing, Gustav Max, Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, Boral Load, Skull Dread, Firewall Isolde, and the Nightmares Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus. The side deck I'll go over in a bit. So, Cardians, this is one of those decks where the win condition is making your opponent read. Uh, it's got a confusing play style, and every card has a miniature novel written in its text box. So either your opponent runs out of time trying to read everything, or they don't read and they end up running into a whole bunch of effects they didn't anticipate. Uh, because of that, I've opted to run pure Cardians without any cheese, just a basic version of the deck where Cardians do what they're supposed to do. This is not the best build, but it's relatively consistent, and hopefully it should function as a good teaching tool, so that whether you want to play Cardians yourself or just counter them, you'll know how. So with that in mind, let's go over how to play this deck. It's actually kind of a toolbox, but the main thing that you want to do with Cardians is make their two boss monsters, which are both powerful synchros. Light Flare is a level 10 with 5,000 attack, 0 defense, and 3 effects. First, once per turn during either player's turn, you can negate the activation of an opponent's spell trap and destroy it. Second, if any Flower Cardian battles an opponent's monster, that monster's effects are negated during the battle phase, which means, among other things, this can beat over Utopia the Lightning and Link Karibo with no problem. Third, if this card is destroyed by battle somehow, or leaves the field because an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a Flower Cardian Synchro from your extra deck, except itself. Usually with that third effect, you're going to go into their other boss monster, Light Shower. This is a level 8, 3,000 attack and defense, and also has three effects. First, when your opponent draws during their draw phase, burn them for 1,500 damage. Second, all your flower cardians cannot be destroyed by card effects or targeted by your opponent's card effects. And third, during your opponent's end phases, you must activate one of these two effects, either skip your next draw phase, or negate this card's other effects until your opponent's next standby phase. Basically, if you want this to remain immune during your turn, and you want to burn your opponent when they draw, then you're not going to be able to draw during the preceding turn. These are both good in different situations. While it's usually better to just go for Light Flare, some decks like Sky Strikers actually have a hard time dealing with Light Shower, so it might be better to go for it, and just keep an additional monster on the field for extra damage. Regardless of which one you summon, you're going to need a lot of monsters. Light Shower is one tuner plus three non-tuners, and Light Flare is one tuner plus four non-tuners. This is actually not that difficult to do with Cardians, because all of their tuners state that if you use them for Synchro material, you can treat all the materials as being level two, which means if you get any five Cardians on the field, including one tuner, you can make Light Flare, and if you get any four Cardians, including a tuner, you can make Light Shower. And that's really the whole point of the deck, just swarm with Cardians until you can get a tuner on the field and Synchro Summon. What makes them complicated is how they swarm the field. Many Cardians have very specific summoning conditions that interact with each other in weird ways. So to start with, many Cardians have what I'm just going to call the draw effect. This effect says excavate the top card of your deck, and if it's a Cardian, you can keep it, and usually something good happens. If it's not a Cardian, then you send it to the graveyard and you don't get the beneficial effect. This is why we're playing so many Cardians and why we're playing only Cardians, because almost every monster has this effect, and if you draw a non-Cardian with it, then not only do you lose that card, but you also lose whatever good effect you were trying to go for. With that established, let's look at these monsters. For the sake of simplicity, I've broken the Cardians into groups based on how you summon them, which should hopefully make them a little easier to understand. Starting with the most simplistic, we have what I call the Tribute Cardians. It's Butterfly, Boar, and Deer. All of these can't be normal summoned, but if you control a Cardian with a different name, you can tribute that monster to special summon them. 
When they're summoned, you do the draw effect, and if you get a Cardian, then you do a thing. Deer is non-targeting spell trap destruction, Boar is non-targeting monster destruction, and Butterfly lets you look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and either rearrange them in whatever order you want or put them on the bottom of the deck. That last effect in particular, while giving you no advantage, is actually really useful first turn, since it not only lets you see what your opponent is playing, helping you to make an informed decision on which Synchro to summon, uh, but you can also sometimes rearrange things to give them a useless or bricky card in their opening hand. Uh, nothing better than putting Garnet on top of their deck. More importantly, this is one of our only two tuners in the main deck, and it's the easiest one to summon, so it's a clear three of in my book. Moving on, we have what I call the free Cardians. This is Zebra Grass, Willow, and Polonia. These cards you can just special summon from your hand, as long as you control a Cardian with a level lower than it, which is usually not that difficult given that these are the highest level Cardians. None of them have the draw effect, but they make up for it with other helpful effects. Zebra Grass lets you shuffle any number of Cardians in your hand back into the deck and draw that many cards, so it helps you get unbricked. Polonia can end the battle phase and draw you a card if it's attacked, making it a decent defensive wall if your opponent doesn't read. And Willow lets you shuffle a Cardian from your graveyard into the deck and then draw a card, which you get to keep regardless if it's a Cardian, making it one of the best monsters in the deck to summon. Despite only having 100 attack and defense, these are all pretty great since it's just putting extra Cardians on the field for free, but it comes with the downside that if you summon them with their effects, you can't summon anything else for the rest of the turn except Flower Cardians. Uh, none of the other Cardians have that restriction, which is why we're playing a toolbox of Lynx and Ixies. Uh, if you can get monsters on the field without using these free Cardians, or without using their effects at least, or if you could stall for a turn without losing them, then you can go into all these extra deck cards. Uh, speaking of which, none of these are too important or essential to the deck, except for Isolde, who I'll go over later. Feel free to replace any of these with whatever Lynx, Ixies, or even Synchros that you want. But I digress. Our last group of Cardians is what I call the Upgrades, because they're all bigger versions of other Cardians, having the same level and similar art. These work like the Tribute Cardians, but you can only summon them by tributing the specific monster they're an upgrade of. So for example, you can only summon this level 11 Willow with Calligrapher by tributing Willow, the other level 11. These monsters all have the draw effect when summoned, and if you get a Cardian, you can special summon that monster, assuming it can be special summoned. Uh, which is a great way to get these free Cardians on the field without using their effects and getting the restriction. What makes these cards really worth it, though, is that they all have 2,000 attack or defense, and these two have uh, battle-related effects that when they attack your opponent, you can draw cards, making them excellent beat sticks. Since it can be difficult to Link Summon in this version of the deck, especially going first, you're usually stuck with just one extra deck monster on the field, so we play these to put more damage on the board. Uh, a lot of the cheesier builds won't play these upgrades, but in a pure variant like this, I find that it's worth it. Uh, that being said, the only Cardian I'm not playing, Zebra Grass with Moon, uh, falls into this category, and since they're so specific, I limit uh, Crane and Phoenix to just one copy each. The only upgraded Cardian I play at 3 is Calligrapher, and that's because it's the only other main deck tuner. Anyway, that just leaves us with our two remaining Cardians that don't fit into one of these categories. Pine is the only normal summon of the archetype, making it an instant 3 of for me since it opens up all your other plays. And when it's normal summoned, you get the draw effect, though nothing good happens if you get a Cardian, you, you just get to keep it. Uh, also, when Pine is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can draw one card, which is a nice bit of recovery if this gets hit by Solemn or Ghost Ogre or something. Uh, finally, our last Cardian monster, Curtain. This is another 2000 beater, and this essentially lets you use the draw effect from your hand. And if you get a Cardian, then you can special summon this card onto the field, meaning it's also a potential play starter since you can get it on the field without another Cardian already being there, assuming you draw well. If you do the draw effect and you fail, though, you not only send the card you excavated to the graveyard, but this as well, so there's definitely a bit of risk involved. In addition, this also has a second effect that's kind of like an Honest for Cardians, allowing you to discard it when a Cardian monster battles another monster to have your Cardian gain a thousand attack. Uh, this is really useful for protecting Light Shower, giving it battle protection in addition to its immunity from targeting and destruction. So, those are all the Cardian monsters. You only have the two that you can summon without another Cardian on board. Uh, but once you get started, it's just a long chain of summoning and drawing, 
which leads to more summoning, which leads to more drawing. It's also worth mentioning that none of the Cardians are once per turn, so if you get a string of Tribute Cardians, you can just keep summoning them and keep drawing from your deck to try to dig deeper and get to the combo pieces you need. The only thing that really stops your combos is when you use the draw effect and you get a spell, which is why we play so few of them, but they're worth the risk because they can open up your initial plays when you don't have Pine or Curtain. Starting with the most controversial pick in this deck, and also probably the most powerful Cardian card, uh, we have Flower Gathering. This says summon four Flower Cardians with 100 attack and different names from your deck in attack position, but their effects are negated, they can't be tributed for a tribute summon, and you can't summon any other monsters the turn you use this, except for Flower Cardians. This is great for a pure deck like mine, because Gathering plus either of your tuners makes an instant light shower, uh, and if you have Pine or Curtain or any of your free Cardians, that's the fifth monster you need to go into Light Flare. The downside of this, of course, is that you can't make anything other than Cardians that turn, not even before you activate this, which means no links or outside text like the calculator, uh, meaning anything that's not pure Cardians will probably want to avoid this. Similar but arguably better is Super Koi Koi. This says excavate the top three cards of your deck, summon as many Cardians as possible from them, ignoring their summoning conditions, and then banish the remaining cards and lose a thousand life points for every card banished. The monsters you summon with this will have their effects negated and they become level 2, which means even if you summon like a Willow, you can't actually tribute it for Calligrapher since its level's not 11 anymore. But none of this matters because this card doesn't restrict your summons at all, which means if you excavate all three monsters with Koi Koi, you can make a Link 2 like Isolde while still keeping a Cardian on the field to make plays, or alternatively, if you just normal summon Pine or add Curtain, you get those three together and make Borolo Dragon or Skulldread. In addition, this has an effect in the graveyard that you can banish it, tribute a monster, and summon any Cardian from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions. This can be great for a variety of reasons. It allows you to special summon your upgrades, even if you don't have its lower form. Uh, you can tribute non-Cardians, like your Lynx or an opponent's monster that was stolen by Boral Load Dragon, to get more Cardians on the field. Uh, and it can even be a workaround for your free Cardians, allowing you to summon something like Willow without activating its effect and locking you out of the extra deck for the rest of this turn. Last of our potential play openers, kind of, is Flower Stacking, which lets you choose three Cardians with different names from your deck and place them on top of your deck in any order. Uh, this seems terrible at first because it doesn't really offer you any advantage, but its potential synergy is great. And if you brick like you often will with this deck, uh, this can give you some chance of survival, allowing you to stack Pine and Curtain on top of your deck to draw next turn, assuming you survive that long. And of course, if you do have plays, then this is just amazing. Since you draw so much, this is essentially Search 3, because you're going to draw into them one after another, letting you combo into a whole bunch of big pluses if you plan correctly. Uh, it also takes the luck out of something like Super Koi Koi, allowing you to guarantee three summons off its effect. In addition, if it's in the graveyard, except the turn it's set there, you can banish it to add one Cardian from your graveyard to your hand, allowing you to get something out of it even if you hit it while using the draw effect and have to discard it. Our last Cardian support card is Recardination, which is mostly here because it's the only Cardian spell trap that gets an effect when it's sent to the graveyard by the draw effect. When this happens, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, add any one spell trap that you excavated to your hand, and then stack the remaining cards on top of your deck in whatever order you want, which is just amazing. And if you actually draw it, it's not bad either. It allows you to target a card in your grave, add it to your hand, and then summon any card in from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions, not just the one you added which again allows you to get your upgrade beaters on the field without the right tributes and lets you get the free Cardians on the field without restricting your summons. Our last two remaining cards are just reinforcements of the army which can be used to search Pine or Crane, the two best cards in the deck, or Crane Crane if you already have both of these, uh, and Moon Mirror Shield. This is here mostly to help with Isolde, but if you draw it, you can always put it on Light Shower because, again, it's immune to almost everything except battle, so making it immune to battle as well, pretty nice. As for Isolde, it's the one link that I'd highly recommend you have here since it has the most synergy. It can be made with any two warriors, which all the Cardians are for some reason, has two downwards facing arrows, and two effects. First, when you summon it, you can add a warrior from your deck to your hand, 
Uh, you can't summon monsters with the same name or use their effects for the rest of this turn, but it's really great for getting Curtain since you can use it defensively on your opponent's turn. Second, you can send any number of equipped spells with different names from your deck to the grave to summon a warrior from your deck whose levels equal the number of equips you sent. This allows you to send your one moon mirror shield in order to summon Pine. It won't get its effect because it's been special summoned, but it's another Cardian on board for free, which can help open up more combos or give you that extra body you need for a Synchro Summon. The only other extra deck monsters worth mentioning are the other two Cardian Synchros, which are both level 6, have 2000 attack, 2000 offense. Boardfly lets all your Cardians do piercing damage, and once per turn you can banish a Cardian from your graveyard, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, they can't activate cards or effects in the graveyard, or summon monsters from the graveyard. Before Master Rule 4, this thing used to be really good alongside your other monsters. These days, you probably just want to play one, maybe even in the side deck, uh, just against those situations where it's actually better than Light Flare or Light Shower. The other Synchro, Moonflower Viewing, all one word, is a Synchro Tuner that, like your other tuners, lets you treat all the materials as level 2. Also, once per turn, during your main phase, you can draw a card, reveal it, and if it's a Cardian, you can special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. Also, that monster can attack directly this turn, but you skip your next draw phase. Uh, this used to be a 3 of staple before Master Rule 4, but these days, I find it's mostly just an emergency card I go into when I have 3 Cardians, including a tuner, and I can't make any other plays. Uh, you get to keep whatever card you draw with its effect, even if it's not a Cardian. So, pretty much unless you get Flower Stacking or Moon Mirror Shield, everything else is going to allow you to go into more plays and continue playing the game. All that really leaves is a side deck, which is mostly just other options. As I said earlier in the video, there are more powerful variants of this deck, uh, but they can be a little bit more difficult to play and rely on a bit more of luck, since they have a lot of outside support that can ruin the draw effect. The two variants that I saw the most suggested on stream were the Desynchro variant and the Bamboo Link variant. Uh, the Desynchro version focuses on synchroing and then desynchroing, allowing you to get four or five Cardian draws all at once. Uh, you combine this with a Lure of Darkness to try to dig towards Soul Charge, and together you can use those to make both Light Flare and Light Shower at the same time, which is a really difficult combo to deal with. The Bamboo Link version, meanwhile, is all about Link spamming with Cardians. It makes use of Azolde and the Bamboo Swords to get a whole bunch of draw power, which should hopefully make up for the lost consistency that comes with removing powerful things like Flower Gathering and some of the free Cardians, things that will lock you out of Link Summons. Uh, the rest of the cards in here are just other cards I'd recommend trying out if you want to live more dangerously or if you want to remove some of the spells that we have here. Uh, there's, of course, several one-ofs that would work very well in here. It also shouldn't be too difficult to tech in some spell trap destruction, like Twin Twisters, or some hand trap destruction, uh, just in case you're finding those to be problematic for you. Uh, there's also the Cardian Trap, which is really strong disruption, but can only be used if you have a Cardian Synchro on the field, so it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward maneuver. Uh, but anyway, there's the deck. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something from it. If you'd like to see the Cardian slot machine in action, you can check out the main video where I'll be playing 10 random duels against opponents on YGO Pro showing off how it works. Or if you're short on time, you can check out the replay video. Both will be on the end card and linked in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs>